This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. An Anarchist FAQ Introduction to Volume 1 As many anarchists have noted, our ideal must be one of the most misunderstood and misrepresented political theories on the planet. An Anarchist FAQ AFAQ, aims to change this by presenting the basics of anarchist theory and history, refuting the most common distortions and nonsense about it, and providing anarchists with a resource they can use to aid their arguments and struggles for freedom. This is important, as much of the ground covered in AFAQ was provoked by having to critique other theories and refute attacks on anarchism. Anarchism has changed over the years and will continue to evolve and change as circumstances do likewise, and new struggles are fought and hopefully won. It is not some fixed ideology, but rather a means of understanding an evolving world and to change it in libertarian directions. As such, AFAQ seeks to place specific aspects of anarchism into their historical context. For example, Certain aspects of Proudhon's ideas can only be understood by remembering that he lived at a time when the vast majority of working people were peasants and artisans. Many commentators, particularly Marxist ones, seem to forget this, and that he supported cooperatives for large-scale industry. Much the same can be said of Bakunin, Tucker, and so on. I hope AFAQ will help anarchism continue to develop to meet new circumstances by summarizing what has gone before so that we can build on it. We also seek to draw out what anarchists have in common while not denying their differences. After all, individualist anarchist Benjamin Tucker would have agreed with communist anarchist Peter Kropotkin when he stated that anarchism was the, quote, no government form of socialism, end quote. While some anarchists seem to take more time in critiquing and attacking their comrades over, ultimately, usually minor differences than fighting oppression, I personally think that this activity, while at times essential, is hardly the most fruitful use of our limited resources, particularly when it is about possible future developments, whether it is on an economic nature of a free society or our attitude to a currently non-existing syndicalist union. So we have discussed the differences between anarchist schools of thought as well as within them, but we have tried to build bridges by stressing where they agree rather than create walls. Needless to say, not all anarchists will agree with what is in AFAQ. It is, after all, as we have always stressed, quote, an anarchist FAQ, end quote, not, quote, the anarchist FAQ, end quote as some comrades flatteringly call it. From my experience, most anarchists agree with most of it, even if they have quibbles about certain aspects of it. I know that comrades do point others to it. I once saw a Marxist complain that anarchists always suggested he read AFAQ, so I explained to him that this was what having a frequency ask questions was all about. So AFAQ is only a guide you need to discover anarchism for yourself and develop and apply it in your own way. Hopefully, AFAQ will help that process by presenting an overview of anarchism and indicating what it is, what it is not, and where to find out more. Some may object to the length of many of the answers, and that is a valid point. However, some questions and issues cannot be dealt with quickly and be considered as remotely convincing. For example, simply stating that anarchists think that capitalism is exploitative and that claims otherwise are wrong may be both correct and short, but it hardly a convincing reply to someone aware of the various defenses of profit, interest, and rent invented by capitalist economists. Similarly, Stating that Marxist ideology helped destroy the Russian Revolution is, again, both correct and short, but it would never convince a Leninist who stresses the impact of a civil war on Bolshevik practice. Then there is the issue of sources. We have tried to let anarchists speak for themselves on most issues, and that can take space. 
Some of the evidence we use is from books and articles. The general reader may not have easy access, so we have tried to present full quotes to show that our use is correct. The number of times I've tracked down references only to discover they did not say what was suggested is, sadly, quite numerous. Moreover, refuting distortions and inventions about anarchism can be lengthy simply because of the necessity of providing supporting evidence. Time and again, the same mistakes and straw man arguments are regurgitated by those unwilling or unable to look at the source material. Marxists are particularly bad at this, simply repeating ad nauseum the assertions of Marx and Engels as if they were accurate. Assumptions are piled onto assumptions, assertions repeated as if they were factual. AFAQ seeks to address these and present evidence to refute them once and for all. Simply saying that some statement is false may be correct, but hardly convincing unless you already know a lot about the subject. So I hope that readers will understand and find even the longest answers interesting and informative. One of the advantages of a FAQ format is that people can simply go to the sections they are interested in and skip others. This volume covers what anarchism is, where it comes from, and what it has done what it is against and why, as well as what anarchism is not, i.e. showing why anarcho-capitalism is not a form of anarchism. The latter may come as a surprise to most. Few anarchists, never mind the general population, have heard of that specific ideology. It is U.S.-based in the main. And those who have heard of it may wonder why we bothered given its obvious non-anarchist nature. Sadly, we need to cover this ground simply because some academics insist in listing it alongside genuine forms of anarchism, and that needs to be exposed for the nonsense it is. Few serious thinkers would list fascism alongside socialism, regardless of whether its supporters call their ideology national socialism or national syndicalism. Unsurprisingly, right libertarians do precisely that. No one took the Soviet bloc states seriously when they described themselves as, quote, people's democracies, end quote, nor considered their government democratic. Anarchism seems to be excluded from such common sense, and so we find academics discussing, quote, anarcho, end quote, capitalists alongside anarchism simply, I suspect, because they call themselves quote, anarchists, end quote. That almost all anarchists reject their claims to being anarchists does not seem to be a sufficient warning about taking such statements at face value. For obvious reasons, we have not wasted space in explaining why another U.S.-based ideology, quote, national anarchism, end quote, is not anarchism. While some individual anarchists were racist, the notion that anarchism has anything in common with those who aim for racially pure nationalist communities is ridiculous. Even academics have not fallen for that. Although, for almost all genuine anarchists, quote, anarcho, end quote, capitalism makes as little sense as, quote, anarcho, end quote, nationalism. Then there is the history of AFAQ. As indicated in the original introduction, AFAQ was prompted by battles with anarcho-capitalists online in the early 1990s. However, while AFAQ may have started as a reply to the anarcho-capitalists, it is no longer that. It would be a mistake to think that they are more significant than they actually are, or that many anarchists bother with them. Most, I am sure, have never heard of it. I did consider whether it was wiser to simply exclude Section F from the book, but in the end, I decided it should remain, partly for the reasons above and partly because it does serve another more useful purpose. Neoliberalism is based, in many ways, on right libertarian dogmas, so critiquing those helps our struggle against actually existing capitalism and the current attacks by the ruling class. I do not wish anarchism to go the same way that, quote, libertarian, end quote, has gone in the U.S., and to a lesser extent in the U.K. Between the 1890s and 1970s, libertarian was simply a pseudonym for anarchist or similar socialist theories. 
However, the American free market right appropriated the label in the 1970s, and now it means supporters of minimal state or private state capitalism, such as the power having ideas that bolster the wealthy. The change in libertarian is such that some people talk about libertarian anarchism as if you can have an authoritarian anarchism. That these people include anarcho-capitalists simply show how ignorant of anarchism they actually are and how alien the ideology is to our movement. I've seen quite a few of them proclaim anarchism is simply a new form of Marxism, which shows their grasp of the subject. Equally bizarrely, these self-proclaimed libertarian anarchists are also those who most fervently defend the authoritarian social relationships inherent within capitalism. In other words, if authoritarian anarchists could exist, then libertarian anarchists would be them. As AFAQ explains, being opposed to the state is a necessary but not sufficient condition for being an anarchist. Not only is this clear from the works of anarchist thinkers and anarchism as a social movement, but also from the nature of the idea itself. To be an anarchist, you must also be a socialist, i.e. opposed to capitalist property and the exploitation of labor. It is no coincidence that Godwin and Proudhon independently analyzed private property from a libertarian perspective and drew similar conclusions, or that Kropotkin and Tucker considered themselves socialists. To deny this critique is to deny anarchism as a movement and as a socio-political theory, never mind its history and the aims of anarchists across the years. Furthermore, as AFAQ stresses, to be a consistent anarchist, you must recognize that freedom is more than simply the ability to change masters. Anarchism means, quote, no authority, end quote, anarchy, and to support social relationships marked by authority, hierarchy, produces a self-contradictory mess, such as supporting forms of domination, such as wage labor, which are essentially identical to those produced by the state, and sometimes admitted as such. Anarchism is fundamentally a theory of organization based on individuals associating together without restricting and so denying and limiting their freedom and individuality. This means that a consistent anarchism is rooted in free association within a context of self-management, decentralization, and bottom-up decision-making, i.e. it is rooted in political, economic, and social equality. While it is possible to be an anarchist while opposing opposing exploitation, but not all forms of hierarchical social relationships, it is hardly logical nor a convincing position. AFAQ also seeks to go into subjects anarchists have, traditionally, been weak on, such as economics, which is ironic, as Proudhon made his name by his economic critiques. In this sense, it is a resource for anarchists, both in terms of our own history and ideas, but also on the subjects which we inevitably come across in our struggles. Hopefully, the critiques we provide of capitalism, neoliberalism, and so forth will also be useful to other radicals. We have tried to indicate the quoted source is an anarchist or libertarian. If in doubt, please look at the bibliography on the webpage. This breaks references down into libertarian, anarchist, and non-anarchist thinkers or sympathetic accounts of anarchism and non-libertarians, which, needless to say, includes right libertarians. It It should go without saying that quoting an expert on one subject does not mean anarchists subscribe to their opinion on other matters. Thus, if we quote, say, a Keynesian, or post-Keynesian economist on how capitalism works, it does not imply we support their specific political recommendations. Some have criticized AFAQ for not including some of the more recent developments within anarchism, which is fair enough. I have asked on numerous occasions for such critics to combine a section on these and, of course, for reference corrections for any mistakes others think we have done. Nothing has been forthcoming, and we have usually discovered mistakes ourselves and corrected them. 
although a steady flow of emails pointing out typos has come our way. We have always been a small collective and we cannot do everything. This also explains why important social events like, say, the turn of the century Argentinian revolt against neoliberalism is not discussed in section 8.5. This is a wonderful example of anarchist ideas being spontaneously applied in practice during a mass revolt. Suffice to say, anarchist tendencies, ideas, and practices develop all the time, and anarchism is growing in influence. But if we continually added to AFAQ to reflect this, then it would never have become ready for publication. As it is, we have excluded most of the appendices from the book version. These remain available on the website along with a lengthy links page. I would like to thank everybody who has helped and contributed directly and indirectly, knowingly and unknowingly, to AFAQ. As for authorship, AFAQ started as a collective effort and remains so for many years. I have been the only person involved from the start and have done the bulk of the work on it. Moreover, the task of getting it ready and revised for publication has fallen to me. I have enjoyed it in the main. This explains why the book has my name on it rather than a collective. I feel I have earned that right. As such, I claim responsibility for any typos and examples of bad grammar that remain. I have substantially revised AFAQ for publication, and while I have tried to find them all, I am sure I have failed, particularly in sections that were effectively rewritten. I hope these do not detract from the book too much. Finally, on a personal note, I would like to dedicate this book to my partner and two lovely children. They are a constant source of inspiration, love, support, and hope, not to mention patience. If this work makes the world we live in better for them, then it has been more than worthwhile. For when it comes down to it, anarchism is simply about making the world a freer and better place. If we forget that, then we forget what makes us anarchists in the first place. Ian McKay an anarchist FAQ. A summation. Quote, no question, the word anarchy freaks people. Yet, anarchy, rule by no one, has always struck me as the same as democracy carried to its logical and reasonable conclusions. Of course, those who rule, bosses and politicians, capital and the state, cannot imagine that people could rule themselves. For to admit that people can live without authority and rulers pulls out the whole underpinnings of their ideology. Once you admit that people can and do today in many spheres of their lives run things easier, better, and more fairly than the corporation and the government can, there's no justification for the boss and the premier. I think most of us realize and understand that in our guts, but schools, culture, the police, all the authoritarian apparatuses tell us we need bosses. We need to be controlled for our own good. It is not for our own good. It's for the good of the boss, plain and simple. End quote. Quote, anarchism is a demand for real freedom and real autonomy. End quote. Quote, but I also remain convinced that something like anarchist future, a world of no bosses or politicians, one in which people, all people, can live full and meaningful lives, it is possible and desirable. We see glimpses of it all around us in our day-to-day -day lives as people organize much of their lives without depending on someone to tell them what to do. We see it in the spirit of revolt, a spirit that is often twisted by anger and despair, but nonetheless shows us that people have not given up. We see it in the political activism, the social lives, the demands for decency and respect and autonomy people put forward, the desire to be individuals while still being part of a community. No, I don't think bowling leagues are the anarchist utopia, but they, like much of our lives outside of the workplace, are organized without hierarchy and oppression. The most meaningful, truly human parts of our lives already work best when organized on anarchist principles. 
Yet I also believe that in its function as critique and as a vision of the future, perhaps the only one that doesn't end our extinction as a species, or as Orwell put it, as a jackboot smashing a human face forever, anarchism is not only desirable, but possible and necessary. End quote. Mark Lair, The Case for Anarchy. Section A. What is anarchism? Modern civilization faces three potentially catastrophic crises. One, social breakdown, a shorthand term for rising rates of poverty, homelessness, crime, violence, alienation, drug and alcohol abuse, social isolation, political apathy, dehumanization, the deterioration of community structures of self-help and mutual aid, etc., Two, destruction of the planet's delicate ecosystems on which all complex forms of life depend. And three, the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, particularly nuclear weapons. Orthodox opinion, including that of establishment experts, mainstream media, and politicians, generally regard these crises as separable, each having its own causes and therefore capable of being dealt with on a piecemeal basis in isolation from the other two. Obviously, however, this orthodox approach isn't working, since the problems in question are getting worse. Unless some better approach is taken soon, we are clearly headed for disaster, either from catastrophic war, ecological Armageddon, or descent into urban savagery, or all of the above. Anarchism offers a unified and coherent way of making sense of these crises by tracing them to a common source. This source is the principle of hierarchical authority, which underlines the major institutions of all civilized societies, whether capitalist or communist. Anarchist analysis, therefore, starts from the fact that all of our major institutions are in the form of hierarchies, i.e., organizations that concentrate power at the top of a pyramidal structure, such as corporations, government bureaucracies, armies, political parties, religious organizations, universities, etc. It then goes on to show how the authoritarian relations inherent in such hierarchies negatively affect individuals, their society, and culture. In the first part of this FAQ, sections A to E, we will present the anarchist analysis of hierarchical authority and its negative effects in greater detail. It should not be thought, however, that anarchism is just a critique of modern civilization, just negative or destructive, because it is much more than that. For one thing, it is also a proposal for a free society. Emma Goldman expressed what might be called the anarchist question as follows, quote, the problem that confronts us today is how to be oneself and yet in oneness with others, to feel deeply with all human beings and still retain one's own characteristic qualities, end quote. Read Emma Speaks, page 158 through 159. In other words, how can we create a society in which the potential for each individual is realized, but not at the expense of others? In order to achieve this, anarchists envision a society in which, instead of being controlled, quote, from the top down, end quote, through hierarchical structures of centralized power, the affairs of humanity will, to quote Benjamin Tucker, quote, be managed by individuals or voluntary associations, end quote. Anarchist Reader, page 149. While later sections of the FAQ, sections I and J, will describe anarchism's positive proposals for organizing society in this way, from the bottom up, some of the constructive core of anarchism will be seen even in the earlier sections. The positive core of anarchism can even be seen in the anarchist critique of such flawed solutions to the social question as Marxism and right-wing libertarianism, sections F and H, respectively. As Clifford Harper elegantly puts it, quote, Like all great ideas, 
Anarchism is pretty simple when you get down to it. Human beings are at their best when they are living free of authority, deciding things among themselves rather than being ordered about. End quote. Anarchy, a graphic guide. Page 7. Due to their desire to maximize individual and therefore social freedom, anarchists wish to dismantle all institutions that repress people. Quote, Common to all anarchists is the desire to free society of all political and social coercive institutions which stand in the way of the development of a free humanity, end quote. Rudolf Rocker, Anarcho-Syndicalism, page 9. As we'll see, all such institutions are hierarchies, and their repressive nature stems directly from their hierarchical form. Anarchism is a socio-economic and political theory, but not an ideology. The difference is very important. Basically, theory means you have ideas, and ideology means ideas have you. Anarchism is a body of ideas, but they are flexible, in a constant state of evolution and flux, and open to modification in light of new data. As society changes and develops, so does anarchism. An ideology, in contrast, is a set of fixed ideas, which people believe dogmatically, usually ignoring reality or changing it so as to fit with the ideology, which is, by definition, correct. All such fixed ideas are the source of tyranny and contradiction, leading to attempts to make everyone fit into a Procrustean bed. This will be true regardless of the ideology in question, Leninism, Objectivism, Libertarianism, or whatever. All will all have the same effect, the destruction of real individuals in the name of a doctrine, a doctrine that usually serves the interests of some ruling elite. Or, as Michael Bakunin puts it, quote, Until now, all human history has been only a perpetual and bloody emulation of millions of poor human beings in honor of some pitiless abstraction. God, country, power of state, national honor, historical rights, judicial rights, political liberty, public welfare. End quote. God and the state, page 59. Dogmas are static and death-like in their rigidity, often the work of some dead prophet, religious or secular, whose followers erect his or her ideas into an idol immutable as stone. Anarchists want the living to bury the dead so that the living can get on with their lives. The living should rule the dead, not vice versa. Ideologies are the nemesis of critical thinking and consequently of freedom, providing a book of rules and answers which relieve us of the burden of thinking for ourselves. In producing this FAQ on anarchism, it is not our intention to give you the correct answers or a new rule book. We will explain a bit about what anarchism has been in the past, but we will focus more on its modern forms and why we are anarchists today. The FAQ is an attempt to provoke thought and analysis on your part. If you are looking for a new ideology, then sorry, anarchism is not for you. While anarchists try to be realistic and practical, we are not reasonable people. Reasonable people uncritically accept what the experts and authorities tell them is true, and so they will always remain slaves. Anarchists know that, as Bakunin wrote, quote, a person is strong only when he stands upon his own truth, when he speaks and acts from his deepest convictions. Then, whatever the situation he may be in, he always knows what he must say and do. He may fall, but he cannot bring shame upon himself or his causes. End quote. Quoted in Elbin Meltzer, I Couldn't Paint Golden Angels, page 2. What Bakunin describes is the power of independent thought, which is the power of freedom, we encourage you not to be reasonable, not to accept what others tell you, but to think and act for yourself. One last point, to state the obvious, this is not the final word on anarchism. Many anarchists will disagree with much that is written here, but this is to be expected when people think for themselves. All we wish to do is indicate the basic ideas of anarchism and give our analysis of certain topics based on how we understand and apply these ideas. We are sure, however, that all anarchists will agree with the core ideas we present, 
even if they may disagree with our application of them here and there. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.